Hey, Adrienne here with the Lynch team at Conway Real Estate, and I have Steve Dabbs here with Care Funding Solutions. Welcome. Hi, Adrienne. How are you today? Doing, Happy Tuesday. Doing great today. Yes. Yeah. Um, so this week, I thought we'd talk about the veterans pension and aid in attendance and the military service requirements that you oh, have. Great. That's a great question, yes. So what are the military service requirements? Okay, well, before I answer that, I, I want to kind of bring up a subject that keeps popping up, and who can help a veteran? And legally, you, you have to be recognized by the Department of Veterans Affairs in order to basically prepare, present, and prosecute a claim. The, the three Ps, we call it. Okay. And there are a number of, of uh, I would call them bad actors, running around doing the work, and they're doing it illegally. Um, again, it doesn't seem to, nothing seems to stop them. So I'd like to bring that up, at least call attention to it, so that when you're uh, with somebody and they're talking to you about, you know, that, maybe, maybe you question them on it, you know, maybe. Yeah, absolutely. So who is recognized by the VA? Well, there's three, three types of people or three categories, if you will. One is the VSO, is a veteran service officer. That's the guy down at the VFW, American Legion. He also works for the state of Arizona and the state VA uh, downtown. So you'll go to a VSO. That's one person that is recognized. The other is a accredited attorney, and they are also allowed to do that. And then there's me, who is an accredited claims agent, and we're all accredited by the Department of Veterans Affairs. And without a, that accreditation, you're not allowed to do the three Ps. And oh, by the way, even, even uh, uh, preparing the claim, which would include going over to the things we're going to talk about today, the military service, even reviewing a DD-214 to determine if they're eligible, actually steps outside that rule. Wow. Now, now, there is one exception, and that is you can do one claim, okay? And everybody can do one claim. And the reason for that is they don't want a family member breaking the law to help mom or dad file a VA claim. And that's the reason a one person can do a claim one time, okay? So that's an exception to the rule. Well, it seems like with you explaining that, that way that that law, one law is broken quite often. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of it going on and has been forever. And, it, and I think it just doesn't seem to matter to so many people. They think it's a, maybe a you know, minor misdemeanor. I, I don't really know what they, goes through their head. But my question to people that are using somebody that's not accredited, um, what other rules are they breaking? What other things are they not doing right if, they, if they're doing that wrong? So again, I think that's worth bringing up and talking about, okay? So yeah. thanks for letting me say that. No, definitely. So what are the military qualifications? Ah, very good. Well, the first is to have 90 days of active duty with at least one day during a period of war. And those periods of war are the Vietnam, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, World War II still, Korea, Vietnam, and of course the Gulf conflict. Um, the thing that I like to mention uh, about the gap between the, the Korea War and the Vietnam War, there's about a nine and a half year period that people that served in the military, indeed, but they don't qualify because they are, they're outside that period of war. So even though they have 90 days of active duty, obviously, they don't have that simply one day during a period of war. They also have to have an honorable general discharge as well. Okay. And what about the reserves? Do they count? Well, I get that all the time. In fact, I'm glad that you asked to talk about this today because literally yesterday, one more time, I get a phone call from a family member and they said, well, you know, my dad was in the, the, the military during Vietnam. Well, during the Vietnam era, there were a number of, of people that joined the National Guard. That was real common. And, and so they would go for a six month uh, active duty, what we call active duty for training, which included boot camp and maybe some sort of technical training uh, for a three or four month period. Then they would be discharged and then serve basically on the week, one week in a month and two weeks a year. And, 
as a reservist. And those people, even though they served with a uniform, they still don't qualify as active duty. And, and it's sad because I'm, I'm the one that has to tell them, sorry, you don't qualify. So, anyway. so then what happens with them? Oh, wow. Well, um, obviously they still have the need for care because they're, generally they're calling because they need help with paying for long-term care, right? Right. And of course, as we've talked about in some of the other videos, the cost of long-term care is astronomical. It, you know, it's, it's easily, easily three to 5,000 a month um, before the, the real higher levels of care even kick in. So it can go to five, six, seven, and $8,000 a month in and, and a pretty quick hurry too. So, but the good news about that, and those people that do fall in between that and that reservist, okay, they, they also are eligible for what are potentially, I should say, eligible for all techs, which is Arizona long-term care system. And that's our Medicaid, that's Arizona's Medicaid program. Now, what I like to point out with the two, the VA program, which is wonderful, but it has a limitation. It, it pays a limited amount of money. For instance, for a, a, a veteran, it's, it's a little over $1,900 a month. Okay? Surviving spouse is $2,200 a month. Well, think about it. If, if you all of a sudden have a, a new bill of four to five, 6000 a month, yes, no doubt, $2,200 makes a big dent in that, but it doesn't pay all of it. So Altex may be a better alternative anyway, even if you're eligible as a veteran. So it's something that's worth exploring, no doubt. Okay. No, I think that that's great because I think people don't realize the different options that they have um, for that. Um, and so when you're talking about that, um, you're saying that sometimes the, the Altex or Medicaid could be better than their VA coverage. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, well, basically, yes. And, and you know, you recall we do those seminars and I get mixed mixed comments on it, but I like to do that little skit I do with the pizza boxes, right? Right. And I come out with uh, the single pizza, which is $1,100 a month, and the, the you know, veteran pizza is $1,900, and the married pizza is $2,200. And then I have that combo pizza. Well, what's that combo pizza? Well, it's got everything on it, right? And right. that's why I say it's better because, you know, it's got all everything you need to help for your health care. It's medical. It includes your, your actual room and board care as well. Uh, any assistance needed, and it's all covered by Alltech. So qualifying for Alltech can be a real blessing, quite frankly. So. Well, I think that's great, and this is packed with so much information for people to really realize, and um, you know, at least give reservists also an opportunity to understand what the options are that they have. So I feel like this is great. Well, how do they reach you? Well, they can give me a call at 800-543-0530, or they can also go to the website, carefundingsolutions.com, and there you can find information both about the VA program as well as all techs at, on, on that website. I think that's perfect, and we'll post your information below so that they can reach out to you easily. All right, good. Thank you very much. No, nope, thanks for being on the show today. All right.